I suppose it started for me in hospital when I was 17 and I was on traction uh, which involves a frame and weights and pulleys and stuff um, and it wasn't going well, I was in quite a lot of pain and so on but in the middle of that uh, the vicar came and he put a card up on the frame and this card simply said when you pass through the waters I will be with you I didn't really know what that was, I guessed it was from the Bible because he, he was a vicar um, but I did think well maybe I should, if God is with me, I should be praying uh, for God to help me get through this rather than just simply take it away. It wasn't until a few years later when uh, I was going through a reading plan and I came to Isaiah 43 uh, and it says this, but now thus says the Lord, he who created you, O Jacob, he who formed you, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed you, I have called you by name, you are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. There it was. And it brought back that, that, that memory. There was that verse, I'd found it. Uh, and, and I think that, that was the, the, the realisation that God doesn't just speak to us as a, as a whole group, as it were, uh, make pronouncements to the church, which he does, um, but here was God speaking personally, God was speaking to me, this was unique, those set of circumstances nobody else had been through, and it's like it was mine. Uh, and those verses have been quite significant to me uh, over the years, fear not, for I am with you. It began, I suppose, a love affair with the Word of God. I wanted to get to know it uh, and learn how to hear God's voice. It was a journey. Uh, of reading and studying and memorising and learning how to apply it and, and to make it real. The verse in 2 Timothy says this, Do your best to present yourself to God as one approved, a worker who has no need to be ashamed, rightly handling the word of truth. That's what I wanted, was to, to be that, that worker. Uh, and it is work, uh, God's given us his word, but we have to just work at getting to know it because it, it, it is how God reveals himself. Uh, when we were first married, it was not long after that the, um, these events aren't related, but it was not long after that the Living Bible was, was published. Uh, and I can remember a 12 year old girl in our church simply saying, but are all Bibles living? And I thought, well, that's, that's really profound and of course true, the Word of God is living uh, and active uh, and God speak to us very, speaks to us very deeply uh, through, through His Word and becomes precious to us. Uh, your word is, is more precious than gold and fine silver and sweeter than honey. And, and how I love your law, writes David in, in Psalm 119. And that's that dimension of it being personal. It's not just a collection of historical books, but it is that. But on top of that, it's God speaking to us. And the same spirit who wrote the word of God applies those same words uh, into our lives. Like Paul says, we've received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God, that we might understand the gifts given to us by God. And, and that's sometimes it's to do with the big things, but I think it's also to do with our daily lives. I'm with you, I'm with you, uh, whatever you go through. Man shall not live by bread alone, uh, Jesus quoted, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. And he encouraged us to pray, uh, give us today our daily bread. And the reason is, I guess, the most important thing is because it reveals Jesus. You search the scriptures, uh, but they bear witness about me. And that's what we need more than anything else, uh, is to just be able to spend that time with God, hearing his voice um, and hearing him speak to us personally. That's a journey. Uh, it, it's a long journey. Uh, sometimes it's not an easy journey, it's certainly not always smooth. Uh, to, to get into the Word, to, to get to grips with it, uh, to understand it and, and to learn how to hear God's voice uh, speaking through it. And every now and then it does require a bit of a kick start. Um, but it's my prayer now that we'd all be renewed in our love for the Word and our knowledge and desire for the Word of God. Uh, I guess the key thing is not how fast we are on that journey, how fast we're going, but the fact we're on it at all, we should be on, on that journey and to devote whatever time uh, we can to God in his word. So Colossians uh, has a great prayer. May we be filled with the knowledge of his will in all spiritual wisdom and understanding so as to walk in a manner worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing to him, bearing fruit in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God.